We love everyday carry videos here at the Hard City, and today I'm gonna to talk about my work EDC. For those of you that don't know what that means, that means everyday carry, and obviously at work, I'm an automation technician, an ace. Excuse me. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Uh, this is not the time, Mace. Automation technician. You guys are gonna love that one. And these are the tools that I carry. You know, honestly, if, if you're a guy and you're into tools, these are some of the things you should have. And if you're a guy and you're not into tools, this is a good place to start. So anybody can kind of get a little bit out of this video if you want. But anyway, let's just jump into it. This is the Vito Pro Pack CP4. It's my newest tool bag that I've been carrying. And, you know, honestly, I like it a lot. It's got this really nice leather on it. It didn't come with a strap, which I really don't care too much about. I decided to just kind of carry it like this when I need to. Also, it has these kind of like grab type handles here where you can't really grab it when you have it full, but it's pretty nice. Uh, it's got a nice zipper on the side. There you can see CP4. And, you know, from Vito, it's really good. I have another one too where I keep some other types of tools and I'll throw that in the B-roll so you guys can see. Uh, Cause I do have a toolbox and I have some other tools and, and stuff in case I need it. But as far as like what I'm carrying all day at work, all night really, this this is my main squeeze right here. We'll jump into that and then I'll go into some other, you know, we'll talk about some other things that can make your job as an automation technician much, much easier, especially if you're just starting out. So first thing off the gate that you're not gonna see in here that I, I would usually keep in here any other place that where I work now is a multimeter, a fluke multimeter. This is a T1000, yeah, T1000. I have the 500 too. T5 1000 multimeter. The reason why I don't have this in there is because we have to at work use approved electrical uh, multimeters uh, that are like you know pn'd and audited and checked out of the safety box and all that stuff like that so you know they want to make sure that we're using stuff that's been checked and all that electrical is a big deal and safety and all that so for most of you guys i would probably a hundred percent keep a multimeter in there and uh you know that's just we got to check for dead and all that stuff and so it's really important don't ever take anybody's word for it always double check if somebody says i checked it you know check it yourself so jumping right into this thing we're gonna unzip it and first things first i have a pair my favorite pair my favorite one of my favorite tools and everybody will probably vouch for these things <laughs> that it's worked with me and these are the nipex scissor scissors and these guys are so razor sharp and they're really finesse. They could go to a really, really small hole and you can really get a good small wire in there and strip it. And they're just really good, guys. And I love the grip on these. Nipex makes some of the best tools, I think. And in all honesty, I think nobody makes better tools than Nipex. Comes with a little sheath. And I just have these all the time. Guys are always asking, hey, you got your scissors? Yes, I have my scissors. So a pair of Nipex scissors, really, really cool. Uh, another pair of Nipex uh, tools. These are an add-on type of deal. And these guys here are, they don't come like this, but I added um, just a pair of wire cutters, Nipex wire cutters to this kit. And so a pair of Nipex wire cutters, always good to have some wire cutters. Nipex just makes the best tools again, guys. So what this kit usually comes with though are the mini Cobra pliers by Nipex and this adjustable I don't know what even you call this thing, but I guess an adjustable wrench, but it's design is so awesome. I always get ragged on by guys who are like, you can't use that for a bolt. It's not the right size, blah, blah, blah. Actually, because of the, the design of this Nipex, uh, it goes la uh, vertical up and down. See, it'll always get the right size bolt. So you'll never strip a bolt with these. They are better than any wrench you'll ever have. And it substitutes having all these different size wrenches these are really, really a, a genius invention. They lock, they don't break, they're well built, and they are just the bee's knees, and they are, are an absolute must have. These ones I'll use to just grab little nuts and nick, you know, spots you can't get to and stuff. These are the mini Cobra pliers, uh, but man, these are just two, two really great items. Outside of this though, in my twin, I'll show some, some B-roll of this real quick. Uh, the, I have the bigger pair of these too. 
and man, they just work so good on like doing those big, you know, hydraulic um, pump nuts that are on the bottom, like hydraulic pumps for dock doors and stuff like that. And we gotta do that. And it's, they just work so good. And they don't strip the bolt because they go vertical. So it's always the right size. It's just awesome. So this little Nipex kit here uh, is always with me. You know, if anything, dudes, just get this. And you're like, you could do just about anything. So really nice kit. And as, as I said, I added the, the cutters to it. And uh, so there you go. And I can't find this on Amazon right now, but if you can find it, buy it. You're really hard to find actually. Again, not really allowed to use electrical tools. And if we check for dead and it's not coming in hot at the top, you know, there's no 480 coming at the top. We shove at the main breaker. I can use this. But, you know, we have to use all approved electrical tools. But this thing here is a, just a cool screwdriver just to have anyway. And it comes out like a little flower there. I call it my, my flower driver. <laughs> you know, because like, it just, it's just awesome. And this is by Weeha. And, you know, it's just a, th I don't know, what do you call it? It's like a 20 in one, really. It's got so many different sizes. And this is a really good tool. So I have that. Here's a, I guess this is a six in one, not really sure, but this is a Klein tool. This is my favorite um, driver, screwdriver set right here, or three, six in one, I guess it is. I'm not really sure how many different tools it has. And you know, you got, you know, a Phillips and a flathead. Uh, you can switch that then you can go this side and you have like a 10 mil and then you can switch these out of here and switch that all around. So this is a really good tool and that's a Klein. And, that, and just the grip on this thing is nice. I really like this uh, six in one. So really nice, love that. That's my Klein. So that's a must have uh, for you guys. If you're just starting out, if you see this at like Home Depot or whatever, just pick it up, man. It's just a, such a good tool. A small, kind of small, small enough ball peen hammer. I can't tell you how many times that I'm like, somebody's like, hey, you got a hammer and they pull out a framing hammer. And I'm like, you know, that's for building houses. And that's all I got. I'm like, just go buy a ball peen. Um, so yeah, here's a ball peen hammer, and this is a really good one. It, it's you know not too heavy or whatever if I'm doing a specific job, and you know I already planned out for the job and the tools I need. I'll grab a bigger hammer, but for most things that I'm doing during the day, this gets me to where I need to what I need to get done. And so this is just a ball peen, small ball peen hammer, Irwin. A set of Wera Allen wrenches. I, I love these. These are just so awesome. I love how they're color coded. Generally, I'm using pink and yellow, you know, the four and the three, and those will tighten up the set screws on um, bearings and uh, drive sockets and stuff like that when we're PM and that stuff. And I have to, you know, check the set screws to make sure they're tight. And basically those are the two. And, I, and it's easier because there's numbers that worn out, but I always know I use pink and yellow, so. I really like this uh, wear a kit. And you guys will start to know when you start to get to where you work, you'll start to realize that you need metric or standard. Most of the stuff that I'm using where I work is all metric. So I don't really need to use any standard. So these are all in metric size. Uh, most of the stuff I'm gonna have is in metric, but there are some things in here that are standard. Like maybe a guy put a standard bolt on something. So I do have a couple of things standard, but not really pair of Nipex pliers or needle noses, needle nose pliers. Uh, and they got a little cutter on the end and these have a really nice grip. There's just something about Nipex tools that give you such a good grip, you know? I don't know what it is about these Nipex tools, but they just have a really good handle on them and they just seem to be so well built. And I love them. Like they're, they just make the best pliers and, and cutters and uh, alligator pliers and channel lock type type of wrenches that I've ever seen. Here's another pair of Nipex tools. This is the bigger Cobra plier. These are awesome. Alligator pliers, Cobra pliers, whatever you want to call them. Everybody calls it something different, but again, these go vertical and uh, you know, a lot, a lot of the things and applications I use this for is to hold stuff at the bottom. If I can't get too hard to reach spot, can't get a wrench necessarily on it, this thing will always hold it. The teeth on it are always, you know, they don't wear down very easily. It, and you get this like, you, there's something about just the way these things lock up, man. You just get such a good grip on it and you can really hold it down. And it just, just the way they made the metal. So it kind of flexes, you know, and it just gives you that extra oomph. 
and these are just so good man i recommend it they're expensive nipexes but nobody's gonna argue with me that they're not the best tools you can get uh so other than that inside here i just have a bunch of different wrenches i'm not going to go into every single one of these uh one thing that you should keep in your toolkit if you can is a punch and the reason why i have this in there is not necessarily sometimes you need to punch things out but more likely what i'm using this for is to like line up bolt holes and stuff like that it goes good with this hammer you know hammer it in something and pry it and line up bolt holes you know sometimes things just don't want to freaking line up so i use a really good punch for that type of stuff um then you know just the wrenches that i need like i said you'll start to figure out i'm not gonna keep a whole wrench set in here you'll start to figure out what wrenches you need where you work you know so here's a 12 millimeter 10 millimeter you know everything's pretty much the same in automation you'll learn your building and you'll learn what tools you you'll need to carry uh, so I have a couple opening gear wrenches here. Uh, here's a five eighths. You know I run into some things that are five eighths. You know maybe it's somebody put the wrong bolt in or something. Uh, Fifteen mil socket. That's generally for the rollers. That's going to do rollers. Tighten up the rollers. So I have that on there. And you know uh, this is a cheap ratchet. Not a big deal. But you know it's a husky. I'm in the process of changing all my ratchets and sockets. But there's that. I have these channel lock gear wrenches that are in standard and these are pretty good and like i said i don't want to carry a bunch of wrenches so i just got these and that gives me enough options in, in standard to get most things that i probably need to get done considering everything where i work is metric and then i have a half inch that's for the, the specific dock doors the pit bulls for the dock doors if you don't know what a pit bull is the pit bull basically is what locks the trailer into the door it like keeps the trailer from moving so it's a little you know device that comes up and locks on the bottom of the bar on the trailers uh then i got some other sockets here's probably a three quarter or a 19 this is a 19 and that will uh do what do i use that for usually that's for like sometimes the pallets will come off the chains and they'll slip off the chains and they're like literally a 1500 pound pallet off of a chain and what we do is we put a jack under there that's modified flat on the top and we put that jack under that pallet and jack it up, jack the pallet up and move it back onto the chains. And that 19 will do that. Then I have a 13 mil and, you know, just some um, miscellaneous different wrenches that I know that I use all the time. A nice little file. Doesn't hurt to ever have a little file in there. You know, this is a cheap one, but it gets the job done. And then I have an extension in here. Again, this is probably usually used for the jack, uh, but, you know, an extension and seven sixteenths and then like i just have here's a little mini ratchet three ace and you know mac tools ratchet good to have and i have just like i just keep like just some real basic sockets in here not a bunch of them just ones i know i'm going to use here's a size four allen that's going to be for a specific thing uh, i think this is on the wiper arm for the wrappers to tighten that set screws on that uh, but i probably get that out of there now that i have these nice color coordinated ones but just, I'm not going to go into these sockets, you know, it's just uh, basically like an eight mil to a 15 is what I'll carry typically. And then, uh, you know, that's pretty much all I need to, to use. I don't need to carry like a whole socket set or anything like that. So that is that for pretty much this pouch inside here. Uh, you know, like I said, you'll start to learn some of the things that you use on a daily basis. So you, there's no need to like carry a bunch of stuff. And usually when we're doing projects or PMs, we will plan for that. So I'll know ahead of time what specific tools I'll need for that job if I need it. And I'll throw them either in this bag or in my other bag, I'll bring it with. Or one of the other techs that is working with me is probably going to have it too. So, you know, um, but as far as EDC goes, like every single day, what I'm walking around with, as as far as troubleshooting and like you know getting uh the machines to run during uh production these are the tools that i need inside this part here i just keep some uh duct tape usually i'll use this to fix the robot curtain if the robots are jacked up use some duct tape to repair that sometimes the curtain gets sliced and the robot's huge just about the size of this room it's a kooka and it it basically delayers product and it's a big vacuum and it sucks the delayers and it sometimes the curtain rips and 
got to do some repairing. Then I just have some earplugs, band-aids, miscellaneous stuff in here. You never know when you need a band-aid. Uh, earplugs, you know, heavy machinery, it gets loud. And then a Sharpie marker, you always got to have one of these. This is like vital for a technic technician. Fine point Sharpie, um, you know, to mark stuff, obviously. <laughs> So that's what I got there in that pouch. And then in here, I keep uh, some hand warmers. So like I said, this building that I work in is refrigerated and it's also a freezer and uh, it's very cold. And so I have some hand warmers I'll stick in my, my freezer gloves if I know I'm gonna be in there for a while, if I'm doing, um, if I'm on calls and I'm doing freezer calls in the crane. And you know, you need these because your hands will freeze in like five minutes. Keep a nice little razor cutter in here. This is the Gerber ERB, ERD, something like that. I forget, ERG, I don't know, Some something like that. But it's a small little Gerber tool, razor blade, and I love this little thing. These are breaker lockouts for breakers, so I keep those in there all the time, uh, just in case I need to lock out a breaker. We have to lock, lock out everything, you know, when we go to work on stuff, so. I keep those in there. I'm just gonna pull all this stuff out of here. Here's a set of standard um, Allen wrenches. And, you know, like I said, sometimes I'll run across something that's in standard, so I'll keep that in here. Another absolute must to have in your little EDC tool bag, guys, is a tape measure. A lot of times I'm doing this is measuring, you know, you never know when you tape measure, but most of the time I'm using this is to me measure the chains. So the chain's got to be a certain, um, you know, you pull the chain up and they got to be both even, obviously. And if one's longer than the other, it probably needs tension because that can cause twisted pallets and all kinds of other problems. So uh, tape measure, that's generally what I'm using that for. And this is just a little mini Milwaukee one. And I leave that in there. Another thing I have in here is just some zip ties. I have these really small ones and uh, just a couple big ones and just a few, not, not many. You never know when you got to zip tie something and you know, they always come in handy. So I keep them in there. It's just always seems like, you know, you need a zip tie and somebody doesn't have them. I always have them in here. I actually keep a couple of my pockets too. <laughs> and I keep these really thin Weeha uh, like screwdriver set, like, um, really thin driver and a couple of thin guys here like this and these are good for repairing watches and glasses and i don't do a lot of that there but some guys break their glasses or whatever and it's always cool to be the guy that has like that then there's knickknack little tools like this that help guy out if he breaks his glasses or his watch or something like that so i just keep i just keep stuff you know you never know when you're gonna need that and so that's pretty much all I keep in there. The only other thing that I keep in here is this book. And this is my notebook. And I went over this in another video, but I've actually taken that down to, to redo it into this video. What this book is, is this is basically my scrapbook for every single thing that I do at work. All the jobs that I uh, take down, um, problems that happen or whatever and I just I basically uh, write this down who I'm working with what was the issue different like little things that we have to put to jumper safety circuits and just just anything and to do with automation and making my job easier and better I like to draw different things and pms and the different machinery and I like to know how it works so I draw all that stuff myself and I like to know how photo eyes work and all these different things that I do. And I study that because I'm trying to get my um, Mech 2 test so I can get more money and make more money. And this is something I have to do on my free time. I, I go that extra mile to make sure I know what I'm talking about and understand the equipment so I can just further advance my career. And so I take a lot of notes. Some guys will rag on you for it. But guys, honestly, if you want to do something like this, it's the best way to go. Now, everything in this book ends up in my engineering notebook. Now, I'm not an engineer and I have no desire to be an engineer, but this book here, um, everything that goes in here, I put in here afterwards. Like I have, you know, on page 50 is passwords, page 86 safety circuit bypass switch. Um, 
that another tech wants has an idea i'm going to draw it up for him and that's his idea so that goes in here and he signs it at the bottom if he wants to and it becomes a legal document so nobody can kind of like steal his idea it's just something i think it's fun to do it's interesting and then so like here's that other that safety circuit so like i said all that same drawing you just saw the uh electrical like it's it's actually so this drawing is this except a lot nicer and neater to understand and you know i keep the notes really nice and organized and easy and it just really becomes something that you can understand and uh i don't know i just really enjoy doing that it helps me uh further advance my career and anybody can pick that up and go oh wow that's how you do that so it's really really cool to go along with that I keep uh, my pen kit and my pencil kit. I'm an artist, so I kind of like to do these kind of nerdy things like that. But I have different color pencils and, and all Sharpie. And uh, you have yourself a compass pencil. And this is something that will draw really nice circles and all that. A glue stick, uh, you know, these sharper Sharpie pens. And just uh, some really cool stuff like that. A ruler, you know, it's obviously a straight edge to make yourself have a nice straight line and you know just stuff like that a mechanical pencil so i keep that goes along with my kit here uh so that's pretty much it as far as tools go um that i carry and then i also take it a little bit step farther and i'm going to show you guys a couple of books that i recommend you get one is the pocket ref from danny glover or no thomas glover danny glover the pocket ref uh is a really good book that'll show you uh, just about anything. I mean, drill drill size and American wire gauges and percentages and math and square steel tubing specs and how to tie different knots and just all kinds of knickknack information that is really, really good. So this pocket ref, ref is awesome. I have one for home and one on my toolbox at work. So this is really cool. Another thing I recommend you guys getting is the Uglies Electrical References book. This thing is awesome. If you're having trouble, you know, understanding what voltage and watts and ohms and all these different things and measuring and 480 and all these different stuff for electrical, this is the book to get and it's really, really useful. I use it all the time and it's made me way better of a technician to understand those kind of things and, and what I'm doing as far as that goes. So Ugly's book, uh, a good flashlight I recommend you guys getting. This is a through night t2 so this will always go on my bibs which is my like freezer bibs will go here and i keep that there and uh it's it's good to go and there you go freezer or i'm sorry a really really nice flashlight i'm actually trying to rush this because they just called me into work now so i guess something happened they asked me if i would come in i obviously said yes so i'm going to work um but i want to finish this up real quick this is my multi-tool. I keep this guys on me in a nice leather sheath. This is a Leatherman P4, the free P4. And it's always good to have a multi-tool just so you can have uh, different access to tools in case you don't have your kit. And this always will be in my pocket or on me. So I have that and then I have a backup flashlight here, which is probably dead. Yes, it is. And that's just a little O-light. One thing, not everyone is going to agree with this, but I keep on me ever since I saw somebody get cut really bad at work one time and damn near sliced their artery, is a trauma kit. I keep a trauma kit on me. I'm certified to, to, to do some medical. Uh, I have um, some ENT training, uh, especially with the police academy and different things that I've been through. So I know how to use tourniquets and, and wound pack and, and trauma. So I keep a trauma kit. This is not just a few band-aids. There's a tourniquet in here, band-aids, wound packing, gauze, and stuff like that. I don't keep a compression needle in here like my other trauma kit, which is for a tension pneumothorax, uh, only because it's at the workplace and um, you know there's a lot of legal deals there. It's, all, it's all, almost pushy having a tourniquet. So, but um, I'm not gonna let somebody bleed out. I, I would lose my job over having somebody bleed out and save their life with a tourniquet so i keep one on me no matter what there's a tourniquet there so that is my edc for work guys one thing that i will mention and is a this is something i always wear to work this is a 1620 shirt jacket 
and a, this has got to be the best uh, jacket for work, like type shirt I have ever had in my life. It's heavy. It's it's just so so nice. It's got these elbows that are double built up, and it's um, it's really comfortable. It's got the buttons. It's made out of Cordera. It's it's fire retardant. I mean, this thing is just absolutely awesome. Highly recommend it. Yes, it's two hundred dollars, but it is so worth the money. I would way way recommend anyone buying those. And so that's pretty much what I got for you guys. I hope you enjoy the video. Like, share, subscribe, and let me know if you guys are in the automation industry, what you do. You know, I don't care for where you work. I'm not gonna tell you guys where I work. So it's, you know, anyway, that's a confidential deal. This is what I carry, and I hope you guys enjoy. Let me know what you carry in your EDC, and let me know any other comments you guys have. Like, share, subscribe. Patreon link will be below. I will see you guys in the next one. I love you all. Peace.